Welcome back to Kaleidoscope. To buy one item you really like and then decades later find you have hundreds more like it is a collector's dream. A dream that came true for one man in Johnstown. One superhero really appealed to him as a boy and now not only does he have an amazing collection of things you wouldn't even think of, but the stories to go with it. My mother was raising you know, four kids on her own and, and she wasn't making a whole lot of money at the time. And, Whatever she could buy me, I treasured, you know, so most of the things that are really, you know, near and dear to me are things that she bought uh, for me as a child. One particular item back in the, the mid-70s, it was a AM radio, and I have it over here on, on the uh, table. You know, AM was the only radio at the time, and it was made in kind of like the, the, the figure of, of Spider-Man, the bust uh, outline of Spider-Man. And I saw it at, at GB's store, you know, up in Richland, and and I looked at the price on it, and it was high. You know, even at the time, I think it was probably like a $25 item or something like that. And it ended up under the Christmas tree that year. So that, that one's, you know, close. Well, when the movie, the first movie came out, you know, 19 years ago, I thought it would just be funny to get a decent Spider-Man costume and just sit in the theater and watch the movie and pretend like I wasn't wearing it. So we had fun with that. I sat in the theater, and after the uh, showing, the owner, Ed Troll, said to me at Richland Cinemas, would you please come back tonight and just walk around in the lobby and entertain the crowd? I said, sure, I'll do that. He said, I'll, I'll give you some you know, movie tickets. I'll comp you. I said, okay. So I walked around and some people started asking me, well, do you do birthday parties? And I said, no, I never have, but why not? I've been at uh, Bent Wookie Comic Shop in, in the West End every year for free comic day since that year. You know, different places would have me. Boz Calls would have me for events. Uh, the Arts Center would have me for, uh, and they still have me up there for their, for their Log Cabin Arts Festival. The local newspaper did an article on me one year because I was doing their New Year's event as, as the character. And I said, well, you can't call me Spider-Man. I'm not, you know, licensed, you know, or whatever. And they said, well, our, our legal department said we're going to call you Johnstown's Spider-Man and take the hyphen out of the, the real world of Spider-Man, between Spider and Man. And that was their way around uh, the legal issues. It's kind of cool. No one was doing it. And now I do it. Well, this all started when I was a young child in the late 1960s. The very first original Spider-Man cartoon was in its first run at the time, probably 1967, 1968. And I was the youngest of four kids. And we started watching the cartoon. And my brothers were already fans of Superman and Batman. You know, the Batman show was on TV. And, of course, the Steve Reeves Superman was on TV for many years. And, and I thought, well, hey, here's a new guy, a new superhero, and it's going to be my superhero. Well, shortly after that, my brother came home from the store one day and he had a gift for me. He threw it on the table there and it was a Spider-Man comic book. And I couldn't believe it because we had other comic books, you know, the Batman, the Superman. But here it was, you know, my hero on a comic book. I couldn't believe it. I wrote my name all over the comic book. I drew all over the comic book. I cut pictures out and pasted on my bedroom wall. And I still have that comic book today. Uh, I got Stan Lee, the author, to sign it and the artist signed it on the cover and I have it on the frame on the wall there, but, but that was the start of my collecting. Once, once I knew there was a comic book, I wanted more comic books. There's a, a man by the name of Brad Douglas, and he's the owner and creator of a web, uh, website called The Spider-Man Crawl Space. And it's been around for probably 23 years, something like 1998 he started it. And he has uh, different videos that he does live with some of his staff and things like that. They, they review comics, they review video games related to Spider-Man. So in the second show, he contacted me to see, you know, because I had sent some pictures to him and he wanted to do a show with me. So the second show was just as long as the first one. It was about an hour and 45 minutes, but it was all me that time. I didn't expect to talk for an hour and 45 minutes, but with my deep connection and my, you know, emotional connection to, to the character and all the different cool things I've been blessed with, with meeting Stan Lee and meeting some of the artists and some of the stories of being in on the ground level of, of Spider-Man as he, you know, was getting popular in the world and collecting things. We just talked, you know, I could have talked for another hour and a half with, with the man, but it was a cool uh, interview and he reaches so many people with it that, you know, I'm just so thrilled to have my story out there. It's satisfying to have my story, not, you know, that I'm famous, but I wanted to get my story out there of my connection to the character, you know, how it has been developed over the years through my family, uh, through my mother and, and through my wife and my children, you know, supporting my my hobby and things like that and, and different ways that I've been able to, you know, just be a part of the Spider-Man story over the years. You're going to see some things from the 1960s, the 1970s. I kind of cut it off at the late 70s uh, for my table here. 
but you're going to see a wide range of things. You're going to see some model kits. You're going to see some board games. You're going to see some action figures. And you're going to see some drinking glasses. And you're going to see some rare uh, promotional pieces as well. Uh, so you're going to see a whole bunch of different things on the table. And Halloween costumes, uh, I have several of those on the table. So those are the kind of genres that you're going to see. Some of my items are permanent in this room on, on the wall and frames. And you'll see a full-size pinball machine from 1980. It was made by the Gottlieb Pinball Machine Company. And I have a rare piece that goes with that. It's an unused play field where the ball normally travels around when you play. No, no part has ever put on there. None of the bumpers, none of the flippers or anything. And it's unused uh, 40 years later, you know, unused and never touched uh, by a part or put into a uh, machine. Some people would never understand it. Uh, there's different kind of collectors, though, too. There's people that will never sell their items, you know, even to the time of their death. But me, I'm, I'm willing to sell it and trade it and do whatever I need to do. If I need money, I'll sell things. Or if, if it's just sitting around in the box, I'll sell things. But it is crazy to have <laughs> this amount of stuff. And then there's people that have more than me. And every collector is a little bit different. You know, some people only want it still sealed in a box or in a package. Some people will accept it as a loose item or a used item. You know, I have a little bit of both. When you're starting out collecting, collect what you love. You know, don't think about monetary value. Don't think about what's this going to be worth in 10, 20 years. It doesn't matter what it's worth. If it's what you love, collect it. That's what I did. 